Aussies driven to take a second job. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your shine of coffee, let's have a look at this article from ABC about cost of living going up and Aussies, well, forced to take a second job to stay afloat. Everything is getting more and more expensive. Petrol, shopping, food, even eating out. You know, those smashed abs guys, they're getting bloody expensive now. Costs of living are going up. So let's have a look at this about people getting two jobs to stay afloat. We're hearing about it in America. Is it that unusual here in Australia? Now, I, I'm a small business owner. You know, I've got my own architectural practice. So it's a little different. You know, I, I'll get multiple projects to, to stay afloat. But, and multiple income streams as well to stay afloat. Uh, so, you know, you want to have diversity. And one, uh, one argument I would suggest is to make sure you don't put all your eggs in one basket. You're not depending on one employer. You're not depending on one source of income. So this is very smart, having multiple jobs, multiple streams, just in case. You never know. Because all the, 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 the bullshit that they say, oh, your office family and, you know, all that, that's, that goes out the window. It's, it's, it, it's a business relationship and you've got to respect it for what it is. And don't believe any of that crap when they tell you. Okay, because it's not true. Anyway, let, let's have a look at this. Let's see how the ABC is framing it. So cost of living forces a record number of Australians into second jobs to stay afloat. Or are they getting ahead? So a record number of Australians are working in multiple jobs to make ends meet as the rising cost of living bites into already stretched household budgets, according to job figures. Victorian mother of two, Donna Hawker, says she realised about five months ago that her family wasn't getting anywhere financially and that she would need to take on a second job. I thought it's better to try and have another job to try and get ahead and save some sort of money, she said. Yeah, that's very responsible. I mean, how long is her first job? The latest figures from the Australian Bureau of Statistics show the hawkers are among a growing number of people juggling multiple jobs to keep up with the cost of living. Well, no, they're not keeping up with the cost of living. They're wanting to get ahead. Okay? They're wanting to get ahead and to get ahead and save some sort of money. So they're not just keeping up, they're getting ahead. So the ABC, I mean, you know, they always will paint these as sob stories. You'll always hear these stories about Aussies struggling, mortgages are going to go you know, through the roof, everyone's going to be in trouble. But I think we're a more resilient people than that. I think we've had it pretty bloody good for a long time and we may have gotten a bit bloody soft, But it doesn't, honestly, you can deal with hard times. People are going to tighten their belts. They're going to not spend money on shit they don't need. And they're going to start realizing, well, one, how to cook at home, how to mend the clothes, how to cut the luxuries, how to save money. That's what you're going to do. They've done it in the past. We'll have to do it again. You know, I mean, come on. I'm speaking from experience. So... The latest figures from the, uh, hang on, let's keep going, an estimated 867,000 Australians were working, working in more than one job in the December quarter, more than at any other time since the Bureau started keeping records in 94. That's not that long ago. Miss Hawker, who lives in Avoca, a small town just over two hours' drive northwest of Melbourne, it's the middle of nowhere, works a couple of days a week as a disability support worker and recently took on an extra on extra work at an after-school care program. Okay, so she doesn't have a full-time job. She's got two part-time jobs, flexibility. She's probably getting really good hourly rate for disability support worker. So it's not like people are taking on two full-time jobs. Uh, you know, so what, what's the, oh, who cares? You're taking on casual jobs. You're taking on multiple jobs to keep it going. That's the way the economy is. That's, you've got greater flexibility there. Isn't that what you want? That's the, the advantage of the gig economy is that you can have multiple jobs. You can be flexible. You can do a side hustle. You can do another thing here. You're not all dependent on one source of income. That's good. Uh, Mr. Hawker also has two jobs as a relief teacher and as a casual farmhand. And, but uh, see, it's okay. When you say you have two jobs, is it two full time jobs? You know, are you doing 80 hours a week? Then we should start, you know, if you're having to work 80 hours a week to just keep going, that's different to someone who's only getting 30 hours a week. 
in one job and another 10 hours in another. You know, these, these are different stories. They're painting different pictures. I don't feel so sorry for them now that they've got a bit of flexibility. You know, if the casual farmhand job drops through, then, okay, you still got the relief teaching job drops through. This is, this is an advantage in some regards, and it's good on them for having multiple income sources. The couple found it harder financially since Mr. Hawker was forced to give up his shearing job six months ago due to wear and tear on one of his shoulders. So he had three jobs. So he was a bloody, bloody tough nut working hard. So the family lived modestly and tried to co- cut costs where it could. We don't smoke or drink. We don't go out for tea. We probably take away once a fortnight. So that's our way of trying to save a bit more money. And I try, try to walk to the shops in town. Well, Petrol's getting more expensive, particularly when you're uh, that far out from the city. Impact economics and police. Economics and police or policy. Lead economist Angela Jackson said the increasing number of Australians working multiple jobs suggested more people were probably struggling to find secure full time work. Well, maybe. Or maybe it's they want flexibility. You know, they're the two sides of it. This is the thing. If you just. You'll have what happens in California where they essentially destroy the gig economy and opportunities for people because of a, a picture that's painted from only one side of the argument. We've seen over the past 12 months that the average hours worked across the economy go up. This reflects the fact that real wages have been going down, and so people have had to work more hours to make ends meet. Dr. Jackson said the increasing cost of housing was another big factor causing many people financial stress. We've seen rents up, particularly in regional areas, she said. Data released by CoreLogic this week shows the proportion of income required to pay rent in the regions now sits at 34%, nationally higher even than in the capital cities, where people are handing over 28% of their income to landlords. Disability support worker Elizabeth Norton said she had to live in a mobile home in Dorcher, two hours southwest of Brisbane, due to high rental costs. Rent pi- prices up here are ridiculous, So I rent just a small mobile home, cheaply, but it lacks running water, she said. It doesn't have a shower and a toilet. I have to use that down at the main house on the property. Well, you're saving money. You do what you got to do. I mean, we went without hot water for six months and had to heat it up in the kettle to give the baths and to wash ourselves in the bathtub because we needed to save money to pay for a system because, you know, times got tough and you've got to manage what you do. And that was part of me realizing my never again moment and really getting my finances under control. You know, the the Dave Ramsey, never again, I'm not living like this again moment. That was part of it for me. And it happens. It's part of life. There's nothing to be ashamed of. You'll go through it. Some people have to learn lessons like that. Others don't. But that's what happens. So, I mean, is it wrong for me not not to feel sorry for people like this? I'm just saying, okay, great, you found a way to save money. Uh, well, you've got to go to a house to have a shower. That's not the end of the world. I've had, you know, father-in-law living with us for years. He had to come into the house to shower because he was living in a caravan. It's not the end of the world. Are we, are we just becoming too precious, or is this just ABC journalists not living a real life? So she said she'd been juggle, juggling multiple jobs for several years. She works two 24-hour shifts a week, as a disability support worker, earning about $580 a shift. So she works for two days, two full days. So she's got five other days she could work. Even if she took two days off, that's another three other days she could work in another job. That's, you know, not bad. Work involves staying overnight at her client's homes. She also works one day a week drafting cattle at the local sales yards. Yeah, what's... Some jobs aren't going to be full time. A disability support worker earning five hundred eighty bucks a day, you're not going to be able to do that seven days a week. You're gonna there's going to be some flexibility. This is you want this flexibility, don't you? Or do people not want this? She said she felt the cost of living pressures in many areas. I have lots of pets. Some of them are aged, so that factors into the cost of living a bit. She said high fuel part prices have hit her hard. Now that's that's going to be the real tough thing for people in the regions. In the city, you can get away with it, honestly. If I had to go you know, go in the city, we can catch the train if we need to. Or for work, even I could have meetings, I could catch the train in there if I needed to. You know, 
you can get away with really limited car use or just catch an Uber as, as, you know, if you need to. But in the country, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna you need to drive and that adds up. It's just re- ridiculous now I don't go anywhere unless it's to work. And I try to do what I've got to do in town when I'm there so I don't have to make extra t- trips, she said. Fresh produce has gone up a bit. So I basically j- just live off frozen vegetables. Now, veggies are going to get more and more expensive now because they've changed the the award for ve- fruit pickers. So all your fruit and veggies are going to get more expensive, everyone. She said she could get a month's worth of meat uh, meals for less than $100 if she bought some meat and used frozen veggies and a bag of potatoes. There are heaps of people out there struggling, and I don't even know what the government can do if they were willing to do anything, she said. Is it the government's... Is that the end? How she she's not struggling. How, how is she struggling? Let, let, let's talk about this. She's there's this woman here. She's got you know two shifts a week, five hundred eighty bucks. She's got another job. She's you know living frugally, but she's not. Is this you know is this struggling? She's got food on the table. She's got a got a place to live. I'm. You know, you've got you go through phases in your life where you do better or you do not. I, I don't. I don't know, guys. I mean, people doing multiple jobs, uh, just because, that particularly in the regions, this seems. I thought this was always the case. Is this something new or not? I mean, you tell me, everyone. You tell me. Okay, I'm I'm small business in uh, in the, you know project based work. So I mean, last week. I had to get four projects out, so I was working, you know, a lot of hours. I don't even want to know how many I did. And you just do it as you have to when you're running your own business. It's kind of a, it's a different experience. And money coming in sporadically in big chunks and you have to manage it, that's part of the challenge of it. Now, I don't see anything wrong with this article. Or with the people here, sure, they're doing a bit tough, but they're finding ways. If anything, it looks positive. They're finding ways to to get on, to get through the day. The biggest issues, I would say, here are the fuel excises and costs that are imposed on them by government taxes. You know, that could have a huge impact right there. Just get rid of these taxes that all of them are paying in the regions. We'll get rid of them for everywhere. That'll have an instant impact on their cost of living. What other costs and burdens the government are placing on their citizens that we could get, get rid of? That's what we should be looking at. It's not how the government can help you. It's how the government can get out of the way. You tell me, guys. You tell me. Do, the, do these sound like like you know dreadful sob stories? To me, it sounds like people are getting shit done. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on this one in the comments below. I don't know how to how to take it, guys. It, it seems like you know they're doing well. They're not going to be movie stars. They're not going to be rich bloody millionaires. But you know, most of us aren't going to be, guys. It's just life. Maybe they need to watch Fight Club. Anyway, thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one in the comments down below. If you're a fan of the channel and want to support us, there are a few ways you can. You can join the channel on YouTube or Patreon. Sign up using our referral links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. Or if you need architectural services, give us a call. Take care, guys, and I'll see you next time. I don't know. It seems like they're doing, they're doing okay. They're not struggling. They've got a place to live. They're not homeless. They got food. They got hot water. What's wrong?